In this case, I'm talking about decay under an old restoration, and we're only going to be talking about a crown preparation. There's another video in this sequence of endodontics on the tooth, so that one will be posted shortly. But this is just the crown prep. So painless injection and profound anesthesia first, very important. You don't want the patient to feel anything. If you use that injection technique every time, the injection will be painless and profound anesthesia. That tooth will be numb as a post. The patient will never feel it and they will love you for that. This is how to place a rubber dam easily. This rubber takes me about 15 seconds to place this rubber dam, maybe 30. It's very easy and it keeps all the materials out of the mouth and the water out of the mouth and the tongue away from the working area. So I'm first removing the inlay with a Brasilier 330 carbide burr. Just cutting around the inlay. It's also my depth cuts for the crown. And then cutting through the inlay and then I'm going to pop it out of there. This is another reason when this pops out. So you don't want that popping out into the mouth. So you can see all the decay. And I'm cutting my depth cuts and my interproximal cut. Be sure you don't touch the adjacent tooth. Keep the 330 carbide burr into the tooth you're prepping. And I want the occlusal reduction, or I want occlusal space of one and a half to two millimeters between the prep tooth and the opposing tooth. So these are thoughtful preparations. Check the contact between the tooth you're prepping and the opposing tooth before you start the preparation. You may not need to re reduce as much tooth structure as you think you do, because all you're trying to do is create a millimeter or two of space for the restoration occlusally. Then this is an occlusal reduction burr. You can use a, a coarse football diamond, another good one. And I'm just cutting to the, the bottom of the depth cuts. And this is a flame shape, fine diamond. This is a barrel, coarse barrel diamond. And I use the coarse barrel diamond down to about the gingival line. Now on the lingual, there's often a super bulge. And you don't want to reduce that whole super bulge to take the prep down to the gingival margin. You're reducing too much tooth structure and you'll weaken the tooth. Only go to the crest or the zenith of that super bulge, about right there, and then place a chamfer in the super bulge so your crown margin is, is basically in the tooth, and then you can contour that once you seat the crown so the patient doesn't feel it with their tongue, and you're preserving all that tooth structure on the lingual. I think you know what I'm talking about. This often bulges right here called the super bulge. Well, you don't want to take all that off. Or you're just going to have a little thin shell of tooth on the lingual. Then I'm flaring this inner part of the tooth where the inlay was. So the, and removing all the decay with a slow speed. That's probably number six round burr. And I like to keep it wet. Have your assistant just flush it with water. Then this is a fine chamfer diamond for the marginal preps. And I want to go about, oh, a half millimeter subgingival. That sulcus is very tight. And so you just want to go just under the uh, gingival margin into the sulcus. Don't penetrate the junctional epithelial fibers. Just go just into the margin. Since this is a lower tooth, you really don't even have to go subgingival. But normally I do on the facial, then on the lingual where we had the super bulge, see I'm creating a supra gingival margin at the crest of that supra bulge. So I'm preserving all that tooth structure. Be sure you've rounded all your line angles. And then this is a radius surge. Now I'm reducing that gingival tissue as much horizontally as I am vertically. I don't, I want to try to stay as much out of the junctional epithelium, the attached gingiva as I can. That will grow back and I'm only doing this to give me access to the margin with the impressions. So just a light touch and removing that horizontally so my impression can capture the margin. Not going deep vertically at all, just enough to capture the margin. 
See, I haven't gone deep, I'm just horizontally. Then I'm gonna freshen that margin again with either my chamfer diamond or my flame shaped diamond. And checking for decay. Now this is just something I like to do. Place an alcohol soaked cotton ball in the tooth when I've removed a lot of decay. Just in case there's some little bacteria that thinks he's snuck away, I think I've removed it all. But just to nuke any little bacteria that might be trying to get away and let that sit there while you go check a hygiene patient. So this is just isopropyl alcohol, an isopropyl alcohol soaked cotton ball. And I do that for this or if I'm doing uh, composites. So this endo technique in a, another video, the single drill Brazilier real world endo method with a single drill and it's fantastic. It will change your life. So link to that video. That's not the final crown, that was just the provisional crown. So you can see I've done the endo and now I'm fabricating the provisional restoration. Now what is this? This is two thicknesses of pink wax it's put in hot water in your water bath for just a few seconds to soften and then I place this on the tooth to be prepared and one or two of the adjacent teeth before I prep the tooth for the provisional. It's a quick way to make a single tooth provisional crown if you haven't had time to fabricate a polyvinyl siloxane provisional restoration matrix. Fabricate this on the tooth preoperatively, put it in a bowl of cold water and it'll set. Then you can use this as a matrix for provisional crown. This is bisacrylate, wet the tooth really wet the prep tooth before you squirt this on the tooth so it doesn't stick to the tooth. It won't stick if you'll wet it. Then put this to place. Now I'm taking a, since it's a single tooth in my practice, when it's a single tooth crown, I take two reversible hydrocolloid impressions. If it's two or more teeth being prepped in, a, in an arch, I'll take a polyether with custom tray and a reversible hydrocolloid impression. Those are the two most accurate impression materials. I always like to take two just because I've got a backup if there's any question about a model once it's been poured. There should not be, and I can't remember the last time there was, we often use the reversible hydrocolloid model for the solid model on which we perfect the interproximal contacts. You can refer to that link of how to never have to adjust an interproximal contact. So this is a reversible hydrocolloid and you've got to have special uh, trays and hoses because you run cold water through the tray to make it set up. But deadly, it's a deadly accurate impression material. But you can only pour it one time and you've got to pour the impression within the model within a couple of hours. You can't send the impression, you have to send the poured model. You can see how accurate that is. You, know, you can't send the overnight the impression. You need to pour that in the office. And here's the second. Now this is just a, a half tray, just for the die. Extremely accurate, because it doesn't stretch when it comes out of the mouth, it pops out. And there's a provisional restoration. Then seating the final. Refer to that link, how to make perfect interproximal contacts. You'll never have to adjust an interproximal contact again if your lab uses the solid model. There's a technique for that. Just being sure all the provisional cement is off the teeth, trying in the final crown. You shouldn't have to adjust the contacts. This is a great carrier for a crown or a veneer red rope wax on a cotton, the handle of a cotton tip applicator. So it's an easy way to carry the crown or the veneer to the mouth. Before you seat the crown, so you've cleaned it and you've prepared it, if this is an Emacs crown, you prepare it as you're supposed to prepare lithium disilicate or Emacs. Refer to that link, we go through how do you prepare the crown. And then wipe Vaseline on the interproximal contacts because you don't want any cement setting up in the interproximal contacts. Then wipe the teeth with tubulacid red and then squirt. This is Unisim resin cement just around on the inside of the margins. Don't fill the whole crown up. 
and put it to place and there's two by twos under a stack of two by twos under her chin so I can put firm pressure and seat it completely. Then absolutely do not remove the excess cement until it goes through initial set. You want it to be like crunchy snow because if you remove it before it goes through initial set, when it's in the flowable state and you wipe it off, you'll get sucked back in the micro gap between the restoration and the tooth. There's always a micro gap between a restoration and a tooth, a veneer or a crown. And if it's a very good crown, it'll be maybe 25 microns. If it's a not such a good crown, it may be 500 and more. Bacteria is eight microns in diameter. So if you wipe it off, you're gonna pull some of that cement out of that micro gap and you're gonna get a void in the micro gap that bacteria will get into and you'll get gingival redness and irritation, sensitivity and decay. So don't remove the cement until it reaches initial set and you chip it off or peel it off. You don't wipe it off. But as soon as you seat the crown, go ahead and pop waxed floss between the contacts. But you're not trying to remove the excess marginal cement, just the interproximal. See how it's peeling off in pieces. And that means it's set in that micro gap so you don't have to worry about a micro void and wiping it with a cotton ball. Ensure all the interproximal cement is gone. Checking the occlusion. This is a great articulating paper because it marks wet. Checking my margins. Here's my final crown. Well, that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Please click on the blue link in the description below and subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com if you want hundreds of cases plus comp complete comprehensive cases on restorative dentistry, endodontics, facial pain, increasing vertical dimension, full mouth reconstruction, veneers, crowns, implants, bridges, anything in restorative dentistry.